Regret later. All righty. <laughs> hey, Ryan, is that you? That is I. Okay, very good. So we do have a quorum. Uh, we're called to order. We've got the public uh, announcement out of the way. I did want to just uh, for the minutes congratulate Mark on his uh, formal appointment as a commissioner and welcome him aboard on behalf of, of the Veterans Commission. So welcome. Thank Mark. you. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, welcome all back from summer. <laughs> if, if we're actually back from summer, yeah, it's still going on. Uh, the, the second item on our agenda is public comments, but I don't know if we have anybody from the public on. Uh, Jennifer, have you joined? Hello. Is that Jennifer? Yes, it's Jennifer, right. Hey, Jennifer. This is Doug Hi. And, uh, Hi, Jennifer. Doug. Hi. Sorry, I've had some problems tonight. I don't know what the issue is, but... No, no worries. We're glad to have you. You won't you be are... able. To... Okay. You're a member of the public, and we're now at public comments. So we just wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, make any public okay. comments that you would like. <laughs> if... uh, uh, listen, it's been a long day. Okay. Well, we'll we'll give you a pass on that then. Uh, I did want to okay. people uh, at the outset even though we don't have everybody on board here today, uh, just a chance to do some quick introductions and especially Mark as our, our new member. Um, Mark, we are missing a couple of the other commissioners. We have uh, six commissioners in total. Uh, two that are missing, Frank Cena uh, is missing and um, Rick, oh help, last name. <laughs> Rick Newell. <laughs> Rick Newell, thank you. Good Newell. Lord. It, it hasn't been that long. Rick no. <laughs> Newell is, is, uh, is not on yet uh, either, but uh, we do have a, a four out of our, our seven seats here. So um, I'll just start the introductions very quickly. Doug Shipman, I have the privilege of co-chairing this group with Ryan Biggs. I'm a retired Army guy and uh, work as a civilian still at the Windsor Historical Society. So this is my beginning of my third year on the commission. Uh, Who would like to go next? I can go next. Um, hello, my name is Ryan Biggs. I am currently a Reserve Supply Corps officer in the Navy. Um, I just got off active duty last year. Uh, and I am also going on to my third year of serving on this commission. Awesome. Helen? Hi, Mark. I'm Helen. Um, I am not a member of the military, but I do work with veterans at the Rocky Hill VA. I'm a physical therapist. Um, and I'm also the secretary of this group, so you might catch me taking notes while we're talking here. I keep track of the minutes. Um, and I've been on the, on the commission for about three years, too, with Doug and Ryan. Ooh, okay. Um, well, Doug, you want me to go next, or we? I don't want to cut anybody off. I can speak a little of myself. Please, yeah, please right. do, Mark. Well, I appreciate being on here. It's uh, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to serve with the town, and, and of course, serve our our veterans. Uh, I myself uh, went from high school, the United States Marine Corps. I was a veteran of the Marine Corps. From there, I went into the Hartford Police Department. I did 22 years at Hartford Police. Retired there as a lieutenant, and I'm over at Simsbury Police Department. And I was fortunate because I was in, in all my capacities, get to work with the dogs. So when you mentioned about dogs barking, and does it phase me? I've spent, uh, got, uh, well, first of all, I've had no other job where I didn't have a uniform and a weapon. And, and the other is with, uh, I work with canines. So uh, I often say I like my dogs better than most of the humans I know, you know, sometimes. Just uh, as a, a kid kidding around, but uh, thank you. It's it's, a, it's an honor to be here, and I appreciate it. And I hope I can add some good input. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Mary and Chris. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Um, I I can go. Um, my name is Chris Taylor, and um, I'm the uh, town social worker with the elderly, also the VA contact representative for the town. And uh, glad to be of help in any capacity that I can. 
And I'm Mary Thibault. I'm the Assistant Director of Parks and Recreation, and I am uh, a town staff representative to this committee. Commission, excuse me. So well, it's great to have everybody. And, you know, we, uh, we're volunteer commissioners. The, the folks that work for the town 24 seven are the ones that really deliver most of the services and do a lot of the, the planning uh, that make the veterans programming happen. So uh, we, we could not do what we do without Mary and Chris and a whole bunch of other people uh, on the town of Wethersfield staff. So thanks for being here. Uh, the next agenda item are the minutes. And uh, the minutes are attached to your agenda packet. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. So is there a second? Second. second. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, any discussion of the minutes? Any amendments? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Very good. Any opposed, please say nay. The uh, minutes are approved. Thank you, Helen, once again for recording all of our wandering conversations. <laughs> okay, uh, letters and announcements. Any letters and announcements? I, I wanted to, to say, Doug, that there's the uh, State of Connecticut Department of Veterans Affairs has the stand down 2020 and uh, September 24th and the September 25th. So if anyone's interested, the veterans, you know, there's a lot of um, informational sessions going on on September the 24th at the DVA uh, Rocky Hill campus. And on the 25th, the DVA is coordinating distribution of personal need items to veterans by veteran service organizations. Oh, okay. So um, if anyone's interested, you know, there is a number here. If you need, if anyone's interested, you could co uh, contact Chuck Leone, 860-616-3804, or chuck.leone at ct.gov, and that's spelled L-E-O-N-E. -E or Leon, I'm not sure if Leone or Leon. Great. And uh, so that's, that's it with my announcement. Chris, thank you. And thanks for putting that up on the town website uh, on the veterans page as well. That's helpful, I think, to veterans. And I know you sent it out to all the commission members back a month or more ago. So um, mm -hmm. and thank you. Do, I, do I understand that most of those sessions or maybe all the sessions are virtual? Is that correct? I, th I think what they're doing is September the 24th. The first one is the it's a um, online informational, so that one is virtual. Mm -hmm. But the uh, second day, it looks like they're coordinating distribution of personal needs. So, oh, that um, at their at their campus, there you know in Rocky Hill, and then also at the Norwich Orange and campuses. Okay. And Helen, is that where you work? Is that your campus? Yes. So I, I got the same email. I have all the paperwork too from that, but Chris knew before I did. So. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, well, thank, that's uh, due to Tammy Marsick there <laughs> at the State VA. Great. I think that's a great event. Um, I have a question for people. I, I receive, um, I guess it's monthly, a newsletter from the VA. Uh, it's a veterans benefit newsletter. Do any of you also get that newsletter? Yes, no. I, I received that letter as well, email. Okay. Mark, do you get that? Um, you know what, uh, veterans benefits, I believe I do. I'm on several veteran websites from the, the VA, uh, from uh, you know, the health mm -hmm. uh, websites. To, I believe I do. Um, so, I, yes, I'd say I do. It's a pretty slick, you know, kind of a newsletter email format. And I wondered, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not really an announcement per se, but it's a communication. Uh, I wonder, Chris, if there's some way, like, we forward that email to you to put onto the website each month, or does that not meet protocol? I just wondered, uh, because it's great yeah. information. Yes, I can. I can uh, work with um, Kath, uh, Kathy and uh, Mary on that. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll I'll forward you the email that I received, and, and then you can see if there that. goes my dog. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Thank you. I'll work on that with Mary. 
Okay. Awesome. All righty. Uh, we're down to action items and just want to point out we've uh, we've made a uh, kind of a format change to the agenda. We, we did away with old business and new business and Mary has consolidated everything under action items. Um, and I invoked the spirit of Sal, who when we first started this all said, you know, you don't have to follow this agenda format. You can do whatever you think works for you. So uh, it just seemed like kind of silly to put things in different categories. So hope this works. If it doesn't, we can change back. Um, just running through the, the numbered items here. The first one is implementation plan update. And at our July meeting, which was kind of an impromptu uh, or, or special meeting, I guess would be the, the correct terminology. We had agreed to work on a couple aspects of our, of our plan. Somebody needs to mute themselves. I'm not sure who it is. Maybe. I'm just hearing a lot of background noise. Oh, maybe it's just me. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe I should mute myself. Um, just to recap what we, we talked about, and, and Frank is not here, so I don't know if anybody can speak on behalf of this component. Frank had agreed to head up the communications team to start working on both a paper newsletter that would be mailed out using Fawn's, uh, Fauna's uh, veteran data, as well as a social media strategy. Uh, and I think he had uh, corralled Mary, Chris, Ryan, Tricia, Sandra, and Helen to help out, but I, I don't know, did you all have any communications over the, the intervening weeks? Um, this is uh, Ryan. Well, for one, Frank just sent the email saying that him and Rick are trying to get in the phone call based off of the number that um, was emailed to them. So I I'm guessing they're having problems getting on. Oh, okay. Um, but um, we have not we have not met for that. Um, we've had the we had small combos, but we have not met and uh, done much with that. Okay. Um, now, un unless there was something that was done while I was away for um, those six weeks or whatever, um, I, I don't know of anything that took place. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mary, I, I just looked at my email, thanks to Ryan. Uh, I, I see that Frank and Rick are trying to get on. Can you email them and, and give email them the correct number? If, if, would that be possible? I don't you know. know what? I will, I can forward. Uh, yeah. I, I don't I know why they're, why they're having difficulty, yeah. but. Um, I'll try to do it from my phone. Thank you so much. See if we can get them, <laughs> get, see if we can get them in. Okay. Um, one of the other major things we had agreed to do on action items, Ryan and I were gonna meet with folks from the library and the uh, senior center uh, and, and start talking about the idea of a veterans center um, we've had some initial communication with uh, Mary, as well as the library director and senior center director. And I think it sounds like we can have a, a good conversation with them. I wanted to just open it up. If anybody else wants to be involved in that conversation, uh, we'd be happy to have you. And I think Mary's gonna help us set up a Zoom call with them in the next couple of weeks. Uh, myself or uh, Brooke Berry. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, because yep. the library has another one of the accounts that won't um, limit you to 40 minutes or whatever. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, anybody else interested in that conversation? Yeah, Doug, Mark Rudowitz here. Yeah, I would, I would be interested in joining in, if that's okay. okay. Fantastic, we'll, uh, we'll include you, Mark. That'll be great to have a third party there. And uh, we'll report back to the group. And then uh, if, if Frank's able to join us, we'll circle back and see if, if he's had any uh, thoughts. Um, um, Doug, on touch, just to touch on that. Um, so my job has opened back up. <laughs> so I'm not sure what time those meetings would be. But right now I am in full course uh, back at work. Okay, so are evenings better for you or late afternoons or 
lunchtime? Uh, yes, or? early, uh, late, late afternoons, early evenings are, are, uh, are better for me as far as meeting with the library staff if they are available around that time. Okay. Let's see what we can do. It's important, I think, to include everybody. So we'll, we'll figure out a way to, to do that. Um, the, just moving on to commission vacancies and appointments, as we've uh, noted already, Mark uh, is now approved, uh, approved by the town council. And I don't want to interrupt Mary because I think she's trying to get people on the phone. So um, I, I know we have also uh, interest in uh, having Jennifer, Sandra, and Tricia join us. And so I don't know um, if anybody's communicated. I think the names have gone through Mary up to the town manager. Uh, but uh, it might be good, so Ryan, and you and I can push the Democratic side of the house to get them uh, to I do did, um I did contact them. So with the change of the initial screening person, uh, Martha Keneally, she is no longer that person. Um, so with the change of her, from what I was told, um, the process has just took a little bit longer and they're going through the stages of checking um, interviews. Uh, I know one of the persons that put in their names, they, they were told that they were contacted about an interview possibly um, oh. to, for them to fill the positions. Um, maybe this is a new process that they put in place, um, but I, I was told that they were contacted about an interview um, coming up. Great. Okay, so they're working on it then. It sounds like that's good. <laughs> I guess an interview, that's probably a step up from the warm body approach that uh, was used previously. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just kidding. I think it was actually the two eyes, two arms, two legs approach. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, sorry, that's military humor. Um, okay. Do we want to move on to Memorial Day Parade liaison report? And Mary, is that you? That's, uh, no, that's actually Rick. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And I just forwarded the uh, meeting information to both of them, and I'm hoping that they'll be able to uh, hit the link and, and get in. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll circle back on that a little bit later. Um, Chris, would you like to say anything about um, any of the services you've been providing over the past month or two uh, to veterans? Sure. Um, yes, I'd be glad to. I I know I um, submitted a um, report that I um, sent to the state VA. They asked for an annual report of veteran benefits, and it was dated June 30th, 2019 to July 1st, 2020. And um, I just wanted to give you some um, numbers and information about those programs, if that's, if that's acceptable. Sure, and can you send us the report afterwards as well? Yes, yeah, I believe I sent it to Mary and to Kathy, so I, okay. I'm sorry that I didn't get to you. But um, the uh, I have the first item here. I have name of benefit and program was the food bank, mm -hmm. and uh, and we have we give out uh, bags of food, two bags of food per person, and uh, we also you know help people with if they need clothing or and they also get gift cards for food either to restaurants or to uh, supermarkets. So these are um, supplies that are donated by the public. And um, Unico had also given uh, gift cards to local eateries during the COVID-19 period. So during that period that I mentioned, 127 veterans received 254 bags of food and or gift cards during that period. And, uh, Fantastic. Yeah, and then the second item I have, it's, um, I have eight items here. I just want to let you know so it's not too long. Um, case management, we provide case management regarding mental health, hospice, respite, home care, financial services, legal, et cetera. So 138 veterans were referred to appropriate agencies for assistance during this time. And then um, I did mention in the report the House of Heroes that 10 names were provided uh, to the House of Heroes organization and we collaborated with our Veterans Commission members 
and Johnson and Bernetti, who sponsored the event and paid for the home repairs. And I, I put in here, many volunteers gave their time to this event and two veteran homes were repaired. And then um, item number four is Choices, which is um, a program that I uh, am trained under to give out information about current health insurance, uh, Medicare, Medicare Savings Programs, Medicaid, Husky, VA TRICARE, uh, Medicare Advantage Plans, all those things. So 41 veterans were assisted by this program during that time frame. Um, number five is CRT Energy Assistance Program. That stands for Community Renewal Team. Uh, and that's where veterans, along with other Weathersfield residents, get assistance for their home heating um, bills. So 22 veterans were assisted in applying for energy programs. Um, number six was Operation Fuel. Uh, and um, we also have Global Fuel, Weathersfield Emergency Fuel Bank. These are all programs that help um, residents here in Weathersfield um, with emergency fuel needs or utility bills. So during COVID, as you could imagine, there was a great need. We had 10 veterans that were assisted with these energy programs. Tax relief for homeowners, town, state, and veteran programs and renters rebate program. During this time frame, we had 30 veterans that were assisted with these programs. Um, and I wanted to mention with the tax relief for homeowners, usually more veterans are I mean, more people apply for these programs and are assisted by ourselves. But the um, what happened this time was a lot of people were grandfathered in from last, you know, the uh, previous applicants that applied for tax relief were uh, grandfathered in from last year. So we had 30 veterans that were assisted with these programs. And I put here also school supply programs. Um, School supplies, notebooks, pencils, pens, erasers, et cetera. We have a lot of um, leftover um, school supplies through the generosity of Weathersfield residents. And so we donated two giant boxes to the uh, September for veterans stand down last year. So I have here total veterans assisted was 372. And I, I did put here also that um, other, you know, I had to mention other things here, which I put in here along with the veteran, Weathersfield Veterans Commissions. We avail the town website to have a veteran services, veteran commission information with various important links available to the public. Assisted the Veterans Commission with conducting the survey for town veterans and supported them in their mission. The coordinators, the town's veteran services contact representative attended all meetings and retreats and programs held during the annual report period, provided logistics to the House of Heroes program and attended the program held on October 19, 2019, assisted and attended the VA coffee program held by the Veterans Weathersfield Veterans Commission on October 26, 2019 at Duncan on the Silas Dean Highway. And then I also gave, um, all the mission and goal and objectives of the Weathersfield Veteran Commission and survey results handout. I just wanted to um, mention that as well. And I know Ryan McKinney and Tammy Marsick, you know, we're very grateful for this information. Hmm. And that's, that's it. That's enough for me talking. <laughs> that's a lot. You've been busy. <laughs> so um, a quick question on that, Chris. That's really great information. Yeah. The mm -hmm. 372 veterans, are they um, uh, deduplicated veterans or are they some of the same veterans? Like, you know, the 127 that received food assistance, are some of them the same as also received case, case management assistance? They could be, yes, they could be the, the same number. Okay. I haven't, I haven't separated the names, but I know that, um, for instance, the, the uh, two veteran families that were assisted with the uh, home repair program mm -hmm. uh, were, were, you know, completely separate from any of the other uh, statistics given. Oh, okay. But they, 
but it, they could, you know, they could have come in for other programs. Because I know you're kind of a one-stop shop and, and you assist people with a lot of different things. And often my understanding of social service needs is that it's the same people need a lot of different supports. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we try to offer, you know, other services. Sometimes people just want Meals on Wheels, let's say, or they want information about home care. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they're so overwhelmed when they call because there's such need. Uh, so we, you know, focus on their need at the time and we invite them to, you know, to call back again if they need anything else. Or we suggest things. I know sometimes people um, can only take, you know, so much information, you know, because there's a lot of programs. and So we invite them, you know, to think about things and then we follow up and um, ask them if they're ready to talk about another service that was offered to them or mentioned, you know, but a lot of times people, you know, will call in, let's say they call in for the uh, specific tax relief program or renters program. They want to complete that and then we tell them, you know, don't forget to apply for energy assistance that's coming up next, you know, and um, so they to build, you know, build a good rapport and relationship with the veterans. And can can you just say again what was the time period uh, that that service was provided? Sure, sure. It was uh, June 30th, 2019, to July 1st, 2020. Oh, okay. So the the fiscal year. Mm-hmm. Got it. Okay. So that report does not include all of the veterans tax relief that goes through the assessor's office? Well, not my report, but Fauna does send in her uh, report. Okay. So, so yes, her report would include all of the, you know, benefits to the uh, veterans through the tax relief. Yes. Okay. Because I check like... with her every year and she sends in her own report. And mm -hmm. I, um, I know the first time I did this uh, three years ago, I said, Fauna, um, you know, do you want me to incorporate your information into my report? And she says, no, Chris, I've already sent, you know, I do this every year. You know, okay. so she does her own reporting. Mm -hmm. All right. I think um, whether, I don't know if it's Chris or Mary, it would be great uh, to for this commission to receive those reports as they're generated, um, just as an automatic thing so that they just come to us you know, as, as those mm -hmm. reports get distributed, any report that comes out of town staff related to service to veterans should be CC'd to every member of this commission so that this commission mm -hmm. has a, a steady inflow of information about service being provided. And I know Fauna's uh, report usually contains 12 or 1300 uh, veterans that get the tax relief. And that's, that's a very useful, mm -hmm number because we don't really have another way of knowing how many veterans there are in Weathersfield that need service. So that's real important information. I'll see mm -hmm. if I can get my hands on uh, the report that Fauna put together last year. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Send it. And Mary, you are probably there at the one of your early meetings with us, I think when, when Fauna came and talked to us uh, about her, she gave us uh, paper paper copies of the previous year's report, I think, so. I think that was the meeting before I started. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, because you guys were talking about it, but I wasn't, I, I hadn't uh, been to that. It all, it all blurs together. Well, it, that's a phenomenal amount of support and it just underscores what I said, you know, we're the volunteers that try to, try to lend a little focus to this, but you all are the ones actually doing the service. So thank you so much for all that. Um, do we want to talk about the Veterans Day ceremony? Well, the question is, uh, with COVID, what to do, what is uh, a safe uh, thing to do? Uh, I was just looking for some guidance from the commission. I was hoping to have Rick Newell on this. I've resent the code I've resent the invitation. I've emailed the phone number, passcode, um, so they could join the way uh, Jennifer did, and I still don't see these guys. So, yeah. I, uh, 
I can follow up with him later. Okay. But I was just looking to see um, what you guys' feelings are in regard to any sort of a gathering of um, people at this at this time and what that you know would or should look like. Like we did something very small for Memorial Day. We kept it to a wreath laying at a, um, a, a site in Old Weathersfield. And then they went to the uh, cemetery and it did another wreath laying. Um, it did get a little bigger than we had anticipated, but um, we were able to um, kind of keep it, um, people wore their masks for them if they were not socially distant and uh, it was, it was very nice. So anyway, I'm just looking to see um, from you, you know, guidance from you guys on what you would like to potentially have us do. And then I will get in touch with, because it's a lot of the, um, a lot of the Memorial Day Parade uh, crew does the Veterans Day one as well. We have already decided we're not going to do anything indoors. We're not going to get the food. There's typically like a reception type of thing in the, uh, on council chambers and that can't happen. But the possibility does exist for something outside and I'm just, like I said, looking for guidance. Um, I, I just very quickly will say that the governor's guidance right now is that public gatherings um, can be up to 100 people with social distancing and proper precautions in place. I don't know how that compares to our normal attendance. It seems like we've probably had between 100 and 200 people at last year's gathering. Well, I Doug, I would be, I, mean, I would be in favor of having this, uh, you know, in-person event and uh, we'll like to, you know, social gathering and, you know, the mask if, uh, if you can't keep a safe distance. But I, I think that would be, uh, uh, you know, good for the for the town to host that, as as opposed to a virtual event. Yeah, yeah. I I think we have a great location for it. I mean, it's always weather dependent, um, and I know the mm -hmm. rain plan in the past has been to move it indoors, which we probably could not do. So, the the rain plan might have to be cancellation or just hey, we're all veterans. <laughs> you know, <laughs> suck it up, <laughs> get out there in the rain. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, I think, Mary, you and I talked briefly the other day about, you know, we probably wouldn't have the entire high school band there, but maybe there could be a bugler from the high school band, uh, you know, one one musician to play an appropriate tune uh, at the appropriate time and, and a smaller crowd, limit it to 100 people. Um, I, I, I tend to want to try to do those things. And I do that in my civilian life with the museum programs and stuff. And I, I am constantly pushing uh, people to, you know, follow the guidelines and be safe, but do things. Don't, don't use the coronavirus as a reason not to do the things that we should be doing. I don't know how others feel about that. I, <clears throat> I agree with you um, as well. Uh, a lot of things that we are doing right now on the Navy side, we're following those guidelines, but we're not canceling the, the items. Because like you said, you know, we should be doing these things. And veterans, I believe they look forward to these events. It's unfortunate that we have to do limits on them. But um, I, I think our, our veterans, they appreciate it. They want it. Um, and we should do what we can to provide, uh, provide it for them. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah, I will absolutely. go ahead, Mark. No, I was going to say, I, I agree. Uh, he's absolutely right. And he's absolutely right. You know, veterans and many of them that live in town are my friends. Uh, and we, we actually look forward to, to these different veteran, uh, uh, you know, events. So that's absolutely true. And I, I am absolutely a, you know, a uh, supporter of having this, you know, of having this continue, like Doug was saying here in person, even with a limited scope of people and social distancing, but yeah, we, we, I, myself included, I actually look forward to attending a lot of veterans events. Okay, that sounds good. So I, what I can do is uh, we typically this this uh, group meets in later September, and then October 
for the November Veterans Day. So I'll get them together and we will start doing something. And then when we have our October Veterans Commission meeting, uh, either myself or Rick Newell uh, can update you on the plans for that day. Sounds great. Okay. And Mary, do you yeah. recall who's the chairperson of that commission or that committee? Is it Rick himself or was there somebody else last year? The, it does not state for veterans that there is a chair. Oh, okay. for, the, for the Memorial Day Parade Committee, it, uh, Rick Newell and Jim Clancy, I believe. I know Rick Newell is a chair. Um, but the Veterans Com Day Committee for the smaller event was a little bit less formal. Um, and it does not specify a chair. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's good because they, uh, I know they, they need to line up a guest speaker and some of those things take a little bit of advanced planning. So, yeah. uh, cool. That's great. Thank you. I think that's a good, a good way to go. And we all know that the COVID-19 situation is subject to change without notice. Um, with kids going back to school and colleges and everything, we could see a second wave and if we have to adjust. But I, I think it's always easier to, to cancel something or postpone it than it is to pull it out of nothing. So at least if you have a plan, you can do it, uh, which is good. Um, the last thing on this, oh, somebody else agrees too, that's good. <laughs> um, Ryan, I think you were going to check in on with the Camilleri family on, on something that might be an appropriate uh, acknowledgement of Dan's uh, service on the commission. Did you uh, have a chance to connect with them? Uh, no, so his, his, I have not been able to talk to his son about it, um, but I will follow up and I'll send an email. Um, that will be my action item by the end of this week. Awesome. And, you know, we really haven't been able to do anything anyway, but it would be nice to have their input. Uh, you know, we, Dan probably has a ton of, of uh, commemorative things given his long period of service to the town and the state and his country, but uh, it would be nice to recognize him in some way. All righty. Well, I, I guess we, we didn't get Rick or Frank back, so we aren't going to be able to talk about the communications planning that they're doing. Um, I'll, I'll send him a note after this as well, just to see if he can, you know, uh, shed any light on that. And then uh, we'll work with uh, Mary or Brooke and or both uh, to, to have a conversation about starting kind of a veterans center. Uh, we'll include uh, Ryan and Mark in that as well. And I think that's it for our action items, unless there's anything I missed. Oh, uh, any board member comments? Uh, yeah, so this is Ryan. Um, just wanted to make a comment. Uh, last night I was on the town council meeting um on the call and there was a comment that was made about the veterans in town and if the town could do something about um the speedy cars that are very loud or the fireworks to kind of give acknowledgement to the veterans in town and, and how those things may affect them mm -hmm. so i figured that that question that task was kind of something that the town council would eventually task us um, or present to us with ideas and whatnot. So I figured I'd want to just bring that up to see um, if anybody maybe wanted to look at that and see how we could make something for the town just to acknowledge the veterans and how those um, things may affect them. Kind of like a public information thing? That, uh, that correct. Of, so, yeah. correct. So pretty much just like the letter that uh, Frank and the team are, are planning to put together and it would I'm guessing with the letter that we're already planning on doing, that would probably be included. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did they say anything about the possibility of law enforcement playing a role in that? Because, I mean, I've, I've watched these, there's a lot of commentary on the various Facebook uh, uh, and groups. Yes, the, the commentary is awesome. Um, but yes, it's, the, the, it's question, 
the question was posed about the police department and it was kind of side swiped um, uh, that they're doing everything they can and they've been notified and, and we'll look into it further. <laughs> so, you know, the, the generic responses. Um, so they, they did pose that question though. Yeah, that's um, uh, quite aside from the veterans issue. I live on the, the northern end of Weathersfield, uh, you know, Hartford Avenue, right by the intersection of the Silas Dean and Route 15. And Friday, Saturday and Sunday nights, it is like motorcycle speedway down there, revving engines and all this stuff. And uh, that just doesn't seem like something that you know, complies with noise ordinances or something. I don't know. But uh, I, who, to whom would this, um, Ryan, uh, you know, what, who would this go to? Is this something that we would prepare that would just go back to town council and say, on behalf of veterans, we ask you to do something about noise or is it a public statement to the town um, residents? Uh, what, what do you think? From what she presented, it seems like, because the town did not really, uh, the, the council members did not really give any information or task on it. Um, I was just taking it from what she was saying. And she was asking them for sort of like a town uh, publication or notification to, you know, notice to the public about the, the general effects and, and why it's not okay to do. Um, although, in most cases, like you just said, I, I live in the same area you do. Um, the noise is, you know, I have a one year and a half year old and a four year old and they hear it. And it's, it's, uh, it's annoying when I just put the kids to sleep. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so I think they're just looking for a general something to acknowledge this and, and give public notice like, hey, you know, you got veterans living in your neighborhoods. You, you, you should you watch, watch doing this or, you know, don't do this. But that doesn't, you know, acknowledge the people that are on, you know, the 15 flying down the 15 loud vehicles and whatnot, because um, they may not live in Weathersfield. Right. right. Hmm. I, I guess I'm just trying to figure, is there something, is there an action that we should be taking on this or, or is it something that somebody at the town council meeting already indicated that they were going to address or how? Uh, I'm not sure how we can be helpful and effective in this. Yeah, I believe maybe the, the only thing that we really have in our hands to do is um, kind of give some substance to it to the town council and say, hey, as, um, you know, Veterans Commission members, this is an issue that has come up and we would like you to seriously take this uh and and figure out a plan for this. Mm. And Helen, I'm just wondering, you know, given your role, it, do you have information about the effects of loud noises on veterans in terms of veterans suffering from PTSD or I mean, anything like I, that? I understand, you know, why that's a it's a problem with the loud noises and everything. Um, I just don't know how we can. I could come up with some sort of scientific report on it. I, mean, I don't know if there's anything out there about that. I can do some research on it, but I wonder if there's a way we could just kind of like get information out there. Cause I don't think people are even maybe aware of it. Cause I don't know, it could be young kids, could be people just trying to have fun and they don't even realize the effect that it's having on the people, you know, mm -hmm. what if we put up like little papers or signs or I'm thinking like if you go big, like a billboard or just something to like raise some sort of awareness for the situation because it is a problem. You're right. Yeah. Well, that, that might be helpful. I think if there's anything that, that we can point to that substantiates the effect on, on veterans or other people, quite honestly, but our, our area of concern is veterans. Mm -hmm. oh. Mark, your little uh, black box keeps brightening up, but did you have a comment you wanted to make about that? No, you know, I was just wondering, uh, is when you're talking about five and 15, I mean, uh, and uh, this, now correct me if I'm, maybe I misheard. I, I've seen noises, uh, definitely a problem. I, you know, I, I don't live actually far from that area off of five and 15. I live right off of uh, Cedar Street here. 
Um, so I hear, you know, I hear uh, the motorcycles uh, flying from, you know, the uh, the uh, the Merlin Turnpike down five and fifteen, and and of course the the style of steam. But um, you know, a lot of it has to do with these with these these younger kids. Well, I shouldn't say younger kids, but these these motorcyclists really revving it up and uh, and 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 just you know, plain English, just flying. So it sounds like, you know, in this first maybe putting distributing a whether it's a billboard or poster, um, you know, like Helen said, or informational, uh, put some information out there. Sounds like it's also it's like from, from my point of view, a lot could be a law enforcement issue, whether it's you know, we speeding, uh, you know, whatever we have to do. I mean, there are there are some uh, noise ordinances here that can be addressed too, some nuisance, nuisance ordinances. So, and and if it's uh, you know five and fifteen, I mean, some of that falls with let's say Troop H, you know, the Connecticut State Police. I mean, maybe I misheard, but a lot of that, that these 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 bikes. I mean, owning motorcycles myself. You know, when these things, when you hear them out there really screaming, they're, these kids are flying and moving. So a lot of that, that, I mean, part of that component is a noise uh, issue, but a part of the other component is really speed. So this somewhat falls with the law enforcement. You know, if, if an, it looks like misheard, I, you know, maybe I misheard, but, uh, you know, there's many times when I've had these kids fly right by me, both on the Berlin Turnpike and the 5 and 15 and the Silo Steam. And, you know, I've often said, gee, if I was in a cruiser, they would, they, they well, they, some of them would take off and you would never get them, but, uh, cause we're not going to pursue that. But, uh, you know, yeah. they, they definitely would be getting sighted. Yeah. So, I don't know if maybe maybe I misunderstood, but part of that noise is these kids just you know, you know just recklessly you know flying down the Silestine and these side streets. I mean, I see it myself here right here on Ridge Road quite often. Mm. So. Yeah. Well, I think if, if if Helen, if you do come across anything that that sort of helps with that, and and I don't know if there's any remedies out there that we could recommend other than law enforcement being more vigilant, it kind of pushes the burden onto the law enforcement team already, which as Mark said, I think it's, it's pretty hard to chase those guys down and do anything about right. it. Not, right, Doug, and I'm not trying to lob toss it to Weathersfield PD or the state police, but I'm saying sometimes, you know, it's just sometimes a mere presence, you know, uh, even where, you know, we do what's called directed patrol where, you know, say, you know, I would say, to be honest with you, I'd say that, you know, from Thursday evenings right through the weekend is when I, you know, we, we get probably the most, or at least from where I live, you know, the, the biggest effect of that, you know, the Berlin Turnpike, and then you have Hooters, and you have the restaurants, and you have the, you know, the, you know just the folks, and of course, same with the Silestine, so that's all, I mean, yeah, I'm, we're not, I'm not trying to task, you know, the Weather Show Police with more than they already are, are tasked with doing, but, you know, part of that would be just even a directed patrol, just being vigilant, and I have to say, I have nothing but praise for the Weather Show Police, I'm on that Back the Blue uh, Facebook page, and you know, as you know, I'm involved with that too, obviously because of my profession. But uh, right. you know, it's uh, they really do a fantastic job. Yeah. So, well, anyway, let me know what I can do assist to assist on this this component also. Yeah. No, that'd be great. Um, all righty. Um, any other board member comments? That was that was, was a good one, Ryan. Ask. Oh, I was going to ask Jennifer, she was talking about a poetry thing that she was going to be doing this month, Jennifer, if you're there. And I didn't know if you could give oh. us more information because I want to come. <laughs> oh, well, I'll forward an announcement um, was made today. There's um, uh, a guy who coordinates a lot of the poetry announcements and I got it today. So I'll forward it on to you. But it's September 20th uh, at the Vernon Arts Center East, which is, I think it's exit 66 off of um, the, um, off of I-84. I've never been there before. And the plan is to do it um, in person, unless there was some, you know, uptick in the COVID numbers and, and then it would go uh, virtual. But it'll, um, I think it's going to start with a, a workshop a writing workshop and then the actual reading starts at three okay. and I'm, I'm the uh, first reader and I've, I've been practicing my, <laughs> my poems. Uh, the, Mike Lepore, who is the, um, 
poet laureate of Glastonbury is the main reader. He um, he was in the army during the Vietnam era, but he never went to Vietnam. He, uh, and so his poems are more secondhand. He uh, writes about the stories mm-hmm. that um, that the you know, troops brought home. And if he saw them for dental care or something, he, uh, you know, he just took them down and now he, he writes about them. My, my poems are actually uh, from my experience when I was in Vietnam. So we each have about 20 minutes. So I'm looking forward to it, I think. <laughs> A little nervous, but well, thank you, Helen. I'm glad. I'm glad you want it. But I'll forward the announcement to you. Thank you. You're you're a brave yeah. soul going up there and doing that. So I'll come and support <laughs> you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're, you're good. welcome. <laughs> and uh, Helen, did you have another uh, announcement you wanted to make about what oh, time I guess. Saturday? <laughs> when, when should we be over on the green? Um, so I am running the virtual Boston Marathon this Saturday. Oh. Oh I'm my starting gosh. At, I know. I'm starting at 7 a.m. and the plan is to run around my area, which is close to um, what's around here, I guess High Crest School. And then I finish around the green in Old Weathersfield. I'm going to do a bunch of laps around there. So if anyone's around and wants to come cheer me on, that'll probably be around, I would say like 10, 10 30 on Saturday morning this week. Wow. I'm going to do it. <laughs> That's An great. actual That's... marathon? Yes, it, it was supposed to be the Boston Marathon, but because obviously yeah. the virus, they won't allow the race anymore. So they had postponed it right. and they canceled it and made it virtual. So I'm still going to do it. It took a long time for me to qualify for it and I want to be a part of it still. So that's my plan. So if any of you guys are around and want to hang out around Little Weathersfield and see me run, that would be cool. If not, that's <laughs> <laughs> And that's uh, Broad Street Green, right? Yep. Awesome. Okay. That sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, that does. All righty. Well, folks, I think we have run out of things to talk about and run out of time. And uh, it's just about 7, 7.01. So uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I will motion to I'll adjourn. adjourn. All right. Helen's got a motion. Mark, will you second? Yes. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned. Thank you all very much, everybody. Mary, thank you for setting this up for us. Good, thank good you. luck good to day, everybody. everybody. Jennifer, thank you. Ellen, thank, good you. Luck. thank you. <laughs> good, good luck, Ellen. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs>